Howdy ho YouTube, Major Court here, and if you've been following my videos lately, you will recognize this as the Camillus TL29 Electrician's Knife that I recently picked up from eBay. Um, I cleaned it up a bit, not that I really needed any cleaning up, um, because it's in really good condition, it's only about 25 years old, and I put a mirror polished edge on it with my Lansky guided rod sharpening system. So, it's really nice, I've been carrying it a bit and it's performing like a champ. Um, and since I have acquired a couple others, I figured it's about time to put out a review on these fine little knives. Um, it's not going to be a very thorough or in-depth review because I'm not an expert on these knives. Um, obviously, the fact that many, many different companies put out electrician-style knives means that there's just a ton of minor variations between them and that, you know, I can't possibly know everything. So think of it as like a broad review of the type. Um, and just basically a show and tell of the three knives that I have here. So obviously oh, you see this Camillus. Um, all electrician style knives are going to have a screwdriver. Um, it's going to be a flathead screwdriver. And I found that the later model one actually has a thicker blade for the screwdriver than the other two do. Um, and they all lock. All these screwdrivers are locking screwdrivers. But they're pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot to these knives. But you do have a nice screwdriver, which can probably be used as a pry bar if you really need it to. You have a nice brass liner lock there on top of your back spring. So this is secure. It's not going anywhere. This one locks in with no movement whatsoever. Um, I would be perfectly secure doing some very light prying with this. Um, you know, prying off a paint can lid. Um, you know, doing any type of... basically using this as a screwdriver. I would be fine with that. And I'm sure many, many people have in the past. Um, this is a semi-collectible for me, so obviously I'm not going to abuse it. And these two are never getting used just because they're so old, and this one holds sentimental value for me, so... This one's the only real user in the bunch for me, but... This one, made by Camillus... Um, the tank stamp's not on the screwdriver blade, so I can't show that to you. But... I, I was actually looking at these, these knives, and I was trying to figure out what the hell the uh, divot in the screwdriver blade was for. And my mother was helping me clean this one up, because um, she found some wood reconditioner that we used to get the wood scales back to life here, but I asked her, you know, what do you think this divot could be for? And after a while I figured out it was for digging your nail in and getting to the nail neck on the knife blade, and she's like, even I knew that. So apparently I can be a bit of a dumbass sometimes. But, um, yeah. You have a nice sized blade. Standard, um, pocket knife style blade, I guess I could say. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the particular style that this is called. I'm pretty sure it's a jackknife blade. I have no idea. I'm still rather new into the hobby of slip joints in general, so do excuse me if I'm not sure of the particulars, but you see the tang stamp on this one. This is your later model Camillus tang stamp. So... As you can see, this is not a very old knife, but it is in very good condition. Um, no pitting or rust. It's essentially a like new blade. And there is nothing on the inside of this. Which is really nice. No rust, no... Um, corrosion, no nothing. I think this is quite a steal. I think I got it for like 15 bucks. Shipping included. This one, on the other hand, um, you could tell it's, it's definitely seen better days. If I can get it to focus there. This one is a, um, World War II era production, so... Stamp date, this indicates um, production of 1941 to 46, 
Same as that Easy Open Jack that I own. And since this is a knife that was issued to the military, um, the design was issued. Not Perhaps not this particular knife, but since it's uh, produced during the war, never know. I don't know the history of this knife, which I find very interesting. You know, this could have seen action, it may not have, I don't know. But it just intrigues me. And, like I said, we did recondition the wood on this. So you can see there is now a nice wood grain to it, if I can get my light in just the right spot. You can kind of see the color has returned to the wood. It used to be more of a black, and now there's a brown, um, brown hue to it. I hope that's coming through. Um, yeah, it's probably not, but we took off a lot of grime and shit from this wood. And a lot of grime and gunk um, from the backspacers. This one I soaked in WD-40. Uh, this one I actually soaked in mineral oil. So I took some different approaches to cleaning each of these. Just to expand my horizons of cleaning knives, you know. Ow. See, these old back springs, they tend to get a bit fidgety. This one is very stiff, but... It does appear to me that someone has attempted to sharpen this uh, screwdriver blade at one point. It is um, quite, well, sharp. <laughs> but this knife does have, obviously, pitting on it. Um, I did take a bit of rust off of the blade. And there is a nice patina to both of these blades. The screwdriver blade on this one is a lot, you know, there's some slop to it even with the liner lock engaged. Some side to side and some up and down, just from where it's worn in over the years. But the lock still does engage. Um, now what I was trying to show you in the last video that I showed this in was, and we'll try to show it this time, all of this gunk, which I have mostly taken out. But as you can see, there's still a bit of corrosion and rust in there. Thankfully, most of it's been taken out. But if you remember last time, um, there was a big amount of buildup of red rust and just general shit that had accumulated over the years. And um, how I got rid of that was, aside from soaking in WD-40, um, bathed it in just Dawn and hot water, and ran it through with pipe cleaners. So, after doing that for about 45 minutes, this is the result. A decently clean knife. Um, but yeah, I wish I had more to say about these knives. Um, they're identical, essentially, except for the different handle scales and the ages of these knives. Um, now this knife... The third one is not a Camillus, nor did I buy it off of eBay. This is actually my great-grandfather's knife. Um, after my grandmother died last year, we have been going through her house, and this was found by my mother not too long ago. And she identified it as belonging to my great-grandfather. So, being the only knife collector in the family, and one of the few people who can appreciate it, it went to me. But... This is an Imperial, and this Imperial Tang stamp, just like the one on my um, Imperial Scout knife, indicates that the production was between 1958 and 1988. So, it's it's got some age to it. It's missing a whole side of scale. But, as you can see, this is actually quite interesting. You can see that it's not actually, um, unlike these ones, where the bolsters are actually attached to the knife. The bolster and scale is one piece. Um, this is just a, a hollowed out piece of metal with, um, I think, plastic compositor. This could even be metal attached to it. So this, and I actually took this off to clean it, just clips in through these clips here. Um, but yeah, not a terribly expensive knife. I'm gathering just from the way it's constructed, but still a nice knife all the same. As you can see, there is some patina on the blade. Focus. 
Thank you, camera. Some patina, um, some scratches. It's been used. My grandfather used his knife well. Um, and I'm not actually sure as to whether or not this particular knife made by Imperial had a um, sheep's foot or worn cliff blade, or whether or not he just sharpened the hell out of it. Because I, you know, like I said, there are probably many variations of this made. I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not it came like this or whether he just destroyed the blade. It's possible. Um, I, you know, I don't doubt that knife loving is something that is um, genetic. So, it's entirely possible he just didn't know how to care for a knife. But the screwdriver blade on this has an unusual polish on the bottom half and is dull and patinaed on the top half. But there's that. And as I said, between the newer screwdriver blade and the old screwdriver blade, or even between the Imperial and the Camillus, you can tell that the new one is a lot thicker. Um, I don't know whether that was between... English, major chord, English. Um, I don't know whether that whether that was because maybe the older ones were breaking and, you know, it was found that a thicker design was better, or, you know, maybe it's probably just something that was improved over time, is my guess, but I find it interesting just to see the evolution of this design over time. Um, this older one doesn't have a ton of wiggle, but there's some side-to-side -side slop. And this has a really thin liner lock. Um, this is a thinner knife in general. But the lock's there. And this one still has a bunch of gunk in it. Cleaned out a lot of black gunk from this knife. I don't even think my light's going to be able to shine in there. It's so thin. Yeah, even if I were to shine it in there, you wouldn't be able to see it. But not really a loss. It's still dirty. Um, yeah, there you go. There's some of the gunk that's coming out of it. It's like an oily, black, greasy gunk from, uh, the mineral oil congealed with the dirt. So, that's my little, um, quasi-review of these electrician's knives. Like I said, it's not going to be a full-blown informative, this is the history of this knife, you know, type of thing. I just wanted to show off for the camera the pretty little knives that I have here. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope take care.